And now we're on part four of the Roof Palomino Repower Build. And I've installed all the electric now, and I redesigned the brakes. So Mr. Cameraman's gonna get a shot of the electric that I've got installed. Got the voltage regulator and the coil. There wasn't too many uh, components. The CDI box, there's a solenoid, interlock solenoid for the starter so it won't start in gear. Starter solenoid. And as you can see, I moved the brake master cylinder from its old spot down here to its new spot up here because I had to go on the uh, inner screen and learn about levers. And then you're probably thinking, looking at that master cylinder, oh, Terrell, how are you gonna fill that master cylinder tucked under there with that cover like that? Well, again, that's where this syringe comes in. I can fill this with some brake fluid and with this hose on the end, I can fill the master cylinder. I get these syringes from my coffee connector. Larry Sorrow. Hi Larry. I'm good on coffee. So here's the new lever design for the brakes. So what I did is I reused, if you remember from I think it was part two or part three, I don't even remember, where I had this piece of angle iron, I was I had it over here and I was going to use it for the gas pedal. So I reused it I just moved it over here. And then this lever is from a Scrub Cadet brake lever because it already had that bend in it already. And then I got a yoke. That's what this thing's called, a yoke. And I put a, five, it's a 5 16 fine thread yoke. And I put a 5 16 bolt in there, fine thread bolt and then I cut it to length. Because I had to go on the inner screen, like I said, and learn about levers. Because, you know, most of the stuff I work on has already been engineered. I never had to engineer brake pedals and levers and stuff. So now, it works like a lever. So that's for the front brakes. So to get the back brakes to work, I'm gonna have to bring that cable from here, which isn't long enough, all the way up into here. And bring that cable through and hook to the top of here. That's why this is sticking up. So when I push on the brakes, it'll pull that cable for the back brakes. And the mistake I made was I already ran the electric cable through this hole here which happens to line up perfect with this. So now I'm going to have to take this out and move it over here. And then I'll use that old hole to run the cable through. I'm going to have to have a cable made. There's a company that makes cables. So I'm going to have to contact them and find out about making a cable. So right now I got stuff uh, hooked up temporary like Got temporary starter button, kill button, and then here's the other wires I'm gonna have to tie in. And I hooked up a gas tank. So we can run this thing and take it for a little drive and see how it acts. And I'm looking at this tank and I thought, I like that tank. So I'm probably not gonna not put that tank in the bag. I'm just gonna leave this tank up here like this and I'll just leave the hood off because I like the way it looks, all stupid and everything. Nah, it's a temporary tank so we can run it. So yeah, we can fire this thing up now and take it for a ride. See how it works, see how the spacers work and the drive shaft, see how the motor sounds, and see if the brakes work.
wheels didn't fall off, axles didn't snap, which I knew it would. All right, so we know it runs and it drives and it performed pretty good. It didn't vibrate, stuff wasn't shaking and rattling off. Everything's all true and everything. Uh, so I want to go over a couple other things I'm going to do. Look at this little column I put on there. Like, Carl, where'd you find that little column? That's from the donor car from my Triumph Spitfire. I had an extra steering column and I thought, you know what? Maybe I can make that column work on here. You know, this is where the turn signals will be. And over here on the Triumph Spitfire is your bright lights. And you can pull that lever and it'll uh, it'll flash the lights. So you can turn the brights on and flash them. And then this is turn signals. And I had to, I had to make a little bushing. That's a bushing for a Bobcat lawnmower. That bronze bushing was the perfect size to fit inside here and fit around the uh, Palomino steering. And then I'll have my friend machine me a nice little cap to go in there. Now this is a little long, I'm gonna have to trim it down because the, the turn signal lever is real close. But I had to trim it some to put it on there to see where I was at. So it's better to make it longer than shorter because I can't add back to it. This is made of aluminium. So I think that looks good because my other option was to put one of those like golf cart turn signals on there and I don't, I don't care for that. Plus these will be self-canceling so when you turn the wheel there's a little piece that fits on here so when you turn the wheel it'll kick the turn signal off automatically. So I have to add that in there. And this, this was the original key switch. You know, this is where the handlebar went. Bolted on the handlebar and has your neutral and reverse light. And there's your key switch. So I thought, well maybe I could repurpose this on the Palomino. So I took it and it said uh, reverse and, and neutral on here it was embossed and it said ignition on and off well I ground all that flat and I don't know if you remember but this was the original switch the guy had in here that I got the ATC from he had this old vintage I think it's either a blower switch or a headlight switch he had for the on off switch so this mounted on the bike like this so I'm flipping it around like this so here's our key switch to turn it on, and this is going to be our headlight switch, parking lights, headlights, and then of course, like I said, that'll be our brights, and then I'm going to take this push button and stick it there, and I'm going to take this whole piece and I'm going to mount it right here. That'll look cool, won't it? And another thing I was thinking is, I might put little lights in here. Now don't hold me to it, but I'm thinking about putting lights in there so when I put the turn signal on, this will flash. When I want to go left, and when I want to go right, this will flash. So I can incorporate all these controls into this so I'm not filling the dash with all kinds of switches and buttons and levers. And I also added a little voltmeter, a little digital voltmeter here. So I can see if my voltage is. So I need to get this mounted and get this kind of squared away and get some more of these wires tidied up and then get that brake, that rear brake uh, cable made. And then we'll see what else we can come up with. So I took a piece of 3 16 plate steel to reinforce this firewall since I was mounting this master cylinder to it. I didn't want to mount the master cylinder right to this 18 gauge uh, sheet metal because I knew it would flex. So I, I made a big 3 16 plate, bolted it in the four corners and then bolted my solenoid to it and so it would stiffen it. So now when I hit the brakes, see it doesn't give. 
So I noticed there's a lot of sloppiness in the steering box. There's a lot of play in there. So I took the steering box apart. Here it is. And from what I was told, this is like an automotive steering box that came out of old cars from like the 40s and 50s. Maybe even a pickup truck. And what I was told was that Earl Roof went to the junkyard and bought a bunch of these steering boxes. And that's what he used when he was making the roof. So they've got these bronze bushings in there, oil light bushings. And I drove them out. And the camera can pick up on that. It had a lot of grooving in it. So that's where all my play was coming from. So I'm thinking there's got to be something better I could use. So of course, I went to my favorite source, eBay, which stands for Everybody's Always Yelling. And of course, they do make an inch and a half by inch and a quarter needle bearing. So that's going to be better and stronger. So I bought two of these uh, needle bearings. They're three quarters of an inch wide. So the two bushings are inch and a half wide, which is a total of three inches. So what I'm gonna do is put one needle bearing on one end, which I already did here, because I wanted to see how it fit. And then I'm using the better of the two bronze bushings, which is this one. And then I'll put this one on top. So this will be almost like a support in the middle. And then I'll drill the hole for the lubrication fitting. I'll take that fitting out and I'll drill a hole in that bushing once I get it seated. And then I put the steering box back together and that should take that slop out of there. So I'm gonna use the steering shaft to help drive in the bushing and the needle bearing. All right, I got my needle bearings in. Didn't damage them by beating on them. They turn, everything works good, drilled my hole. This is a very simple steering box. Got these uh, tapered bearings. That goes in first. And there's another one here. Goes on like that. And here's the race for it. And there's this tube with a little spring on it and a little gasket. It almost looks like it was probably bigger. Like it was longer. It looks almost like somebody chopped this off because if you look, Part of the numbers on the side of the box are gone. So I wonder if Earl Roof took these car steering boxes, and I bet you it was a longer piece, because they had a machine shop, I'm sure, there. Looks like they cut it off and shortened it up. Maybe they put their own kind of bushings in there. I don't know. You tell me. It looks like it's, like it's been sawed off. Almost like they put it in a big hacksaw. So we got this in, our worm. Let's make sure that turns. All right. That's all good. Now you just drop this in. And that's where that mesh is. There we go. And then it's got this adjuster on here. So you can adjust the slop. Now if you notice, there's a big groove in here. Because this thing was so sloppy, they probably tried to get the adjustment out. And it started wearing a groove in this cover. So I took my barrel sander, because it was all, all raised and 
and sharp and jagged. I took my barrel sander and I sanded out all the nastiness that was in there. So this little square thing goes in this slot. That's the tricky part. There, oh, there we go. Now I'm going to screw it out to get the cover to, to meet up so I can get the bolts in. I probably got to turn this cover around. There we go. Turn the cover 180. Sure, they use some kind of liquid grease. You probably don't want to put like some number one or number two grease in there because it you want like liquid grease so it can kind of it's almost like an oil but yet it's thick enough where it's not gonna ooze out everywhere. Now if you notice there's another hole here and that was for another fitting to pump some lubricant in, and I took that out because it made a flat surface where I was putting my bearings in. And then this, like I said, this adjusts your, your worm gear mesh. And then I'll play with that when I get it back on there. And then there's a locking nut. So once I get this back on the, on the Palomino, then I'll mess with this adjustment here. So that's it to that steering box, pretty simple. Somebody's here. What's going on here today? Just working on the Palomino. Well, here's a book that'll tell you everything you need to know, and right off the bat, you got that fender on backwards. Well, maybe I want it on there like that. It's your Palomino, you put it on there the way you want. I'm thinking of maybe making a tow truck out of it. Yeah, Don't it look like a tow yeah. truck? Yeah, that's yeah. nice. Yep. Looks pretty good. No, but well, really, does it? It goes like. It goes the other way. It goes it, this it, it way? Going that, yeah, I'm going that side there. There you go. It goes like that? Yep, you got her. Oh, what are you, some kind of Palomino expert? No, but I got a few of them at home. How many you got? Oh, I got uh, two original ones and four clones, plus a couple of 60s. And Tom here, my buddy, he's got how many you got? I've got uh, three original and one clone and three super deluxe or deluxe uh, dump beds, 60s, and one, one 60 plane. Well, I just got one. Well, I'd say you got about a half of one, but you're getting there. Looks pretty nice when you get set up. Motor fits perfect. Now you got one with a Crosley engine in it? Yep, four cylinder uh, water cooled Crosley engine with a three speed transmission. And then you got your axle mounted solid in yep. the back, so yep. you got no suspension. No, no suspension either. And how's it ride? Rough. Rough. I thought it was a hard roof. roof. Huh? I thought it was a roof. It's a rough roof. Rough it's kind of hard with the uh, keep your foot on the foot pedal when it's bouncing, but it's, you know, it's more for show than it is you know, to use it. And how fast it go? Well, I've only had to 34 mile an hour. But it'll probably run a little bit faster. Are we gonna race? Oh yeah. yeah. But we ain't racing title for title. No. No title. Labor Day weekend? Yeah, we'll go to Pond and we'll meet you over in, where are you gonna meet us at? Portland? We can meet you in Portland and we can meet you in Pontiac. Oh, oh, Pontiac. Oh, Pontiac, okay. Portland. Yeah, Pontiac. Portland in July, and then you guys have your thing in... Uh, I'll probably do it in Pontiac. Pontiac. I'll take it to Pontiac this September. year. Because that's kind of far for you to go. Yeah. But we don't mind. That's just a copy now, but there is original ones out So there. here, I got the book. Dennis here gave me the book, and it's got everything in here. All about the clutch, the original transmission, steering all the part column. numbers, steering columns, all the panels, 
It's a whole cornucopia of information. Now, like, you had this out running, running around late Yes, here. we did. We took it out for a minute to try the brakes to make sure the front brakes work. Okay. And they work, they lock up. And we we're spinning around doing donuts. All right. The only thing I don't like is it don't have a differential. So I'm trying to think of a way of maybe making a differential on the back. You got any ideas on uh, Mr. know it -all? Well, I tell you, you could probably drill one of the hubs out, take the splines out, or maybe try to incorporate some type of electric clutch to where you could kick it in and out. Now, you know what? I like that idea. You know, like an it, electric lawnmower clutch. Right, and fix it to where you could lock it or unlock it. That's a good idea, and I can just flip a switch to disengage it, or to engage it, and then disengage it by turning it off, and it'll act like a differential. Differential lock. And I, right now, is it kind of well, is it kind of hard to turn, or do it want to kind of, Yeah, it kind of wants to around. jump around. You know, I, I knew it was going to do that, but, you know, in the gravel and, and dirt, you know, it slides right. easy, and then, you know, in the snow, we were doing a bunch of donuts, and it, you know, worked good. Drive shaft was, you know, real smooth. Yeah, I like that. That really it, looks it, good. It, you know, it didn't vibrate or shake, or so I'm, I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. And then now I'm working on a steering box. So we, what is that steering box out of? Well, the real early ones I think are out of an early Ford car. A Ford? Yeah, they call it a worm gear rotor drive steering box. Something like that, you know. So it came out of like a Ford car from like probably. what, the 40s? Well, I would say probably late 40s, somewhere in there maybe. And I noticed it don't have any seals on that box. Yeah. Keep any of the grease in. Yeah, see, I've never had but one of them older ones apart, but I've had the later steering, because there's two types of steering boxes. The one with the solid shaft and then the one with the tube around it. So the other, the, the later Palomino got a whole different steering box? Right, it's got a different steering box in it. And it's not only that, it's more, it's a little bit further to the left than what the original one was. It's, it's moved over a little bit. What are you uh, going to use for a steering wheel, or are you going to leave that part off? Well, I got a steering wheel. Well, where's it at? Smarty pants. Look what I got. Looks you pretty got... nice. That's supposed to be like an early Cup Cadet steering wheel they used on the early ones. So this this steering wheel is off a of Cup Cadet lawnmower? It's the same one that's on the early ones. It looks just like it. And I got me a steering column. You got a steering column on you? No, nope, not on mine. I just got the solid tube on the early one. Yeah, well, I got my have turn signals in that. You got turn signals on no, any of your... No, no turn yeah, signals. Yeah. What about, are you leaving this gas tank like this way, or are you cutting a hole in the hood, or what are you doing there? Uh, no, that's just a temporary oh. tank, so I could run it. I got a gas tank for it. Okay. Boy, you sure are nitpicking on my... Well, I don't, want, I don't want you to be better than mine, see, so I'm trying to pick it apart, uh, you know. Nice hat you got there. Thank you, so I like your hat, too. Where'd you get your hat at? Uh, a couple of your uh, fellers were here from your uh, your club, your Who's Palomino that? club. Uh, Big Dave and Alan, you know them too? Never heard of them. Have you, Tom? Have you heard about them? No, no, no. Oh, wait a minute. They're them guys up in that Pontiac area. Yeah, don't you yeah, yeah. We we talked to them. Yeah, they're from Pontiac. Yeah. Don't, don't they got a prison there? Yeah, I think both those two. That's where they stay. I think. I'm not for sure, but they somewhere close. They to did that. mention something about work release program. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, they're good friends of ours, and they're good, good roof collectors. We're all in the hobby together. We yeah, they came and bought some roof parts. Now, Tom, you've got a uh, Jacobson like my three-wheel Jacobson, don't you? Yeah, but I don't know what they're called. I mean, it's just a three-wheeler. It's called three-wheel Jacobson. I'm oh. telling you what it's called. Oh, okay. Right so on. you've got one. I've got one. A little better paint than yours, so. You want to buy mine? No, I got one that I don't have any work done yet, so. You get that one fixed, I'll bring it over and you can get mine around. It is fixed. Okay. You can work on, work on mine anytime. Well, Terrell, about time for me and Tom to get going. We want to stop by and see how you're doing. It looks pretty nice. Can't wait to see it when it's all done. Looking good. All, all right, well. thanks. Thanks, thanks, for, for, uh, oh, thanks no. for bringing me to Parks List. Oh, no problem. Now you'll know. Tom, thanks for the tour. You're welcome. Any well, questions? you get over our way, stop in, we'll show you some nice Palominos. Oh, no.
All right, I sure will. All right, you guys have a safe trip back. All right, All right see ya. Bye. Okay, I had to redo the steering box again because I delved into it a little deeper and found out some more stuff about it. I had to enlist the help of the lawnmower detectives to help me. So, it is a Ford steering box, we know that. And it was longer. It, this was cut off. Because on the end of it, it had a seal. So when they cut it off, they didn't put a seal back in there. And I was wondering why it was all dirty and greasy and nasty while well, everything was leaking out because there's no seal. And then on this end, where the steering shaft comes out, you know, it was wide open. You know, the, the distance between this bushing was wide open. So stuff could fall down in there. But on the Ford, when they built the car, I'm sure the steering column slid over this part here with the steering wheel. So they didn't have to worry about crap getting in there. So I'm like, well, I need to seal that up too. So in case you Palomino guys out there are gonna be working on this, your steering box, I found a Skag bushing from Oregon, 45-127 that fits in there. Now this wasn't machined because they didn't have nothing to go in there. So I had to take my barrel sander and just kind of lightly barrel sand it out and then I fit that so it fit uh, tight. I had to tap it in there. It didn't just slip in, I had to tap it. And then, it wasn't exactly this size. So I had to open it up some, but since I don't have a lathe, I used one of these adjustable wood boring bits. Because I thought, well, brass is soft, wood is soft, so it worked good. I was able to bore it out and then again, I had to lightly sand it with this barrel sander to get it to fit it. So of course, I had to take it all back apart and drive those needle bearings out that I put in the first time. And of course, I destroyed one of them taking it out. So I had to go back on the inner screen and I bought two new needle bearings again. Now the old ones were three quarters of an inch. I bought new ones that are one inch and then I just eliminated that bushing that I was gonna put in between it for support because there's only about three quarters of an inch between there. So I had to kind of sink it down so I could put a seal in there. And again, it's like, where am I gonna find a seal like that? Well, where do you find everything? On the inner screen. So I went on the inner screen, I found some hydraulic place in uh, Owensboro, Kentucky. I think it was called River City Seals. And look, they had a seal that fit in there, perfect. And then I bought one for this end, too. And then I came up with the bushing idea. And it's like, well, I don't need that seal now, but I'm gonna use it. So what I'm gonna do is take this seal and put it in this way. So I'm gonna stick it on the end of the shaft and then when I slide the shaft in, this seal will seal it. It shouldn't come out, and even if it does, what's it gonna do? It's just gonna flop around on here and ain't gonna hurt nothing. So I'm gonna use that seal in there. So now, since there's no seal pocket machined in there, I need to retain that seal in there. So I got lucky, and I found a washer that's the right size. And then I drilled and tapped at six, 632. So if you wanted to do this, if you're a Palomino guy and you want to put a seal on the end of it, you've got this old gearbox, because the newer Palominos, they had a different gearbox. That's what my friend Dennis told me, that that's the, uh, the connoisseur of Palominos. So if you want to make a retainer and you don't have this right size washer, you can just take a washer and cut it in half and just use the two halves, like a half moon, to kind of retain it and just maybe drill one hole on each side. So that's how I'm gonna retain it. And then of course I painted it. 
the gearbox. So now all I have to do is put it all back together and then fill it with some lubricant. Now I went on the inner screen and I seen where they use like double zero grease for manual steering boxes. And then I talked to Dennis, the connoisseur of Palominos, that's what I'm gonna call him from now on. And he said they use corn, corn head grease for like uh, lubricating a corn head on a combine, I guess. You get it from John Deere. So he said that's what they use, corn, corn head grease. He said it's like grease and then when it gets warm it turns like into an oil and then when it cools down it turns back into a grease. So I'll look into that. And then all we have to do is put it put it all back together and put it back on the Palomino and all that slop is gone because the first time I got the slop out of it when I adjusted it but now I want to seal it. I don't want no crap getting in there and I don't want any stuff leaking out. I changed all the hardware to stainless steel and I reassembled it and it's all ready to go. I just have to fill it with lubricant and put it back in the Palomino. Now I want to address a couple of the comments in the comment section. And one of them was on the drive shaft. Everyone's worried about that drive shaft. There's nothing wrong with that drive shaft. It works fine. This is the Honda drive shaft. I had to buy another one. I don't know if you remember because I needed to lengthen it. So I needed the other end. This was as long as the dry shaft and it had that spline out here with the U-joint. So I had to buy another one. So I had to cut this one apart to get that spline part out. So this is how that Honda dry shaft works. This other end is like a U-joint also. This is the part that works, that hooks to the rear axle. This locks on, it's got a seal in there. There's a big spring in there. And then there's this part, which is like a knuckle. That's what's inside the drive shaft. So you got a U-joint on one end and you got a little bit of give on the other end. As you seen earlier, we were out driving it, spinning around, it didn't vibrate or shake, everything was fine. Now the gas tank. Spin the gas tank around, just spin the gas tank around. Why don't you just spin the gas tank around? <laughs> I'll tell you why I didn't want to spin the gas tank around. It's in the shape of a wedge, so when it's in the rear of the Palomino, you don't see it. If I would have spun it around, you're gonna see about this much of the gas tank from the back. I don't want to see that much of the gas tank from the back. Doesn't bother me to cut a hole in there and, and patch it. I can fabricate it. All right, so here's the tank. I cut the filler neck off at the top and patched it. Welded a patch over it. This is where I'm gonna fill it now. I'm gonna drill, or I'm gonna cut an inch and a half hole in there. And we went to our friends over at Filler Neck Supply and got some filler neck parts from them. This is a hiller neck. This is a filler neck. So don't get hiller neck confused with filler neck supply. So this is the cap I'm gonna use. This is gonna go on the inner fender in the back. This is a nice cap and it's vented. That's how you tell it's vented. Watch. Woo! That's nice. It even says gas on it. And then, they'll sell this tubing by the inch to this hiller neck. So I got six inches, and then I told them to bead one end. So they can bead one end, they can bead both ends. We're gonna put that in there and I'm gonna weld that in. Then I got me a piece of hose from Filler Neck Supply. See, it says right on there. 
So don't get this red hiller neck confused with filler neck supply. They're in Washington. So this is going to connect this on the Palomino. And then I got some clamps. Now they got regular hose clamps, but I opted to get these nice clamps. So if you're interested in any of these filler neck parts, go to the links below, right underneath in the description, right under here. There's links to these parts, and you can click on them links and it'll take you right to their store. Check out filler neck supply, and tell them you heard it from this hiller neck. Carol. So that's how that's going to be. Now some of you may be thinking, well why didn't you put it in a side fender, Terrell? You know, like a Jeep and fill it from the side. Well, I thought about doing that. The only problem is, this Jeep is little. So the filler neck would have been way down here. So you'd have been way down here to fill it. This way I can fill it right up in the back of the Jeep on that inner fender and it's not going to be in the way. At least it's not in the middle of the bed now. And then on this side, you can see I already got the hole drilled. And that's for the sending unit for the gas gauge. So I got to bore a two inch hole in there and then mount the uh, sending unit. Now, I got to patch this. I got to fill that in. So I made a template out of two different cardboards this time. 30 brick of hams and some fancy feast. From the kitties. You know what that fancy feast? Pretty tasty. Me and the kid, me and the kittens, we, we shared a can the other night. Mmm, no. Mm, tasty. So I made my template out of fancy feast. Bent it all up like this. Voila! Here it is. Here's the piece I'm gonna weld in. Looky there, looky there. I'll weld that in. So I'll get this welded in, I'll get that sending unit mounted, and then I'm gonna go ahead and seal like 90% of the inside of the tank through this big opening so I don't have to sit there and pour that sealer in and sit there and try to swish it all around I'll go ahead and brush it in, seal it all up as much as I can, you know, keep it away from where I'm going to weld, and then that way all I got to do is pour it in through here, or pour it in through where the sending unit goes, and then I'll just have to seal this, this part of here. So there's the gas tank, and I got some of the electrical done, so we'll go over there and we'll look at some of the electrical. So here's a better idea to let you know where the hiller neck's gonna go. Right here, right back here. I don't know how I'm gonna turn it, probably like this, so you can just hit the button and pop it up. But it's gonna go back here in this here area, see? Nice and out of the way. All right. I got my little dash in. I'm not done with this yet. I got some stuff that's gonna go in there. There's my voltmeter. My little volt gauge. There's reverse. Now this switch, this headlight switch, isn't a headlight switch. I thought it was from some old car. Must be a blower switch. I thought B stood for Buick, but it's, it's a blower switch. So what it does is it turns on the parking lights and then turns on the headlights, but not the parking lights. Doesn't turn them on together. So I got another switch coming, a different one. I should be able to use this bezel and the knob over on a new switch. Got my little brake pad mounted, Honda exhaust uh, collar. Got my fuse block in.
gotta have fuses. And then of course I got all these spaghetti under here which I gotta tidy up because I got a lot more stuff to hook up. So once I get everything hooked up, then I'll uh, you know tidy up all these wires. Got my fuel pump mounted. Gotta have an electric fuel pump. Now the first place I had this electric fuel pump mounted was on the firewall. And not thinking, you know, when you turn that thing on, you can hear it. Hear it? You can barely hear it. Well, bolt that thing to the firewall, and then you can hear it rattling. You know, I didn't think about that when you turn it on. That thing brr, 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 was rattling the, the firewall. So I mounted it to the engine, to one of the engine mounting brackets. And that quieted it down. I tried rubber mounting it to here too and it still vibrated and made a bunch of noise and I don't want to hear that thing when I turn it on. This is how they have the rear of the roof set up for lighting. They use a truck reflector and a truck marker light. So this marker light was just a tail light. So when you turn the headlights on, the tail light would come on. So I'm probably going to use these as brake lights, so when you hit the brakes, these will light up. Because I like the way those look. So I'm going to need some kind of reverse light, turn signal, and tail light. And on the original Jeeps, the Willys Jeeps, they used to have a light that just mounted on there, kind of like this, but a round one. And I didn't like the way that looks. I'd like to have something flush mounted like this. So I went on the inner screen and looked around and you know everything is four inch which is too big it looks too big this is three inch I'd like to stay three inch and the only three inch flush mount lights I could find were a little pricey so I thought you know what I could probably make my own tail lights out of these reflectors and that's what I did and I'll show you what I made now these reflectors can come apart. You can pop this cover off and you can get that reflector out of there. So I thought, well that's good. The only problem is I only had one of these. I don't know what happened to the other one. I can't remember if it had both on there or if one was missing. So I got a hold of my new friend, Dennis, from the Roof Riders and said, hey, you got any reflectors? And he said, yeah, I got a couple. So he sent me a couple reflectors. And then what I did was, I went to the hardware store and I bought me some of this alumin or aluminum stock. They sell it in all different sizes at the hardware store. And then I went and bought some 1 8 aluminum rivets the real short shanked ones and I cut me out a piece two foot long by three inches wide and then I rolled it up because that way it'll stiffen it up as you roll it so it would fit in here And then I pop riveted it together. And then I thought, okay, now how am I going to put something on the back of it? Since I only got one of these caps, and the ones that Dennis sent me didn't have any caps. They were just this bezel with the reflector. Plus, I want to be able to take this off in case I need to change the bulb. So I'm trying to think, what can I use to put a cap on the back of it? And then it came to me, a ball glass cap for a ball glass jar. And this is what I came up with. So one of these is, a, these are three quarter inch LEDs. One is clear and one is red. So the clear one is a little dimmer which will be my tail light, and the red one is real bright, and that'll be my turn signal light. This other hole is for the wire 
for my reverse light, which is another clear light that I drilled out the center of the reflector and mounted it in there. And then I glued it in with our Velco HV350. Now we sell this stuff in our web store. You gotta get this stuff is good. I use this a lot. So I put the little control tip on there with the handle, squeeze handle, tube squeezer, which works real well. And then I was able to get in there and glue the inside, nice little bead. And then I glued the outside, nice little thin bead. And then you can see how I pop riveted it. Pop riveted it here. And then I went on the inside where the other end ended and put a couple pop rivets in there. Then I took the pop rivets and then I went from the inside out. And then I ground down what was sticking out a little bit. And then I took a flat file, a little tiny flat file. I got this set of flat files, or this set of different files. And I filed it kind of flat. And that works so I could screw this on. Because I gotta be able to hold it on there tight and I wanna be able to take it off if I have to. So those act like my threads. See? Now I can tighten it on there. That's pretty slick, huh? Thinking of using those pop rivets? Now let's light it up and see how it looks. With my new, this is another tool you can make, my new little handy dandy power supply. Cause I'm like, I'm always trying to test stuff and I'm always gotta hook it to a battery and to light things up and I'm afraid the wires are gonna touch. So I'm sure all of y'all got these laying around. I got a box of these transformers from other tools. So I found one that put out 12 volts DC. You know, it's 300 milliamps, but it's enough to light these LEDs. It's just a good little homemade power supply for 12 volts. Then, you know, it had the little end on it that you plugged in, which I cut off. So the wire, if you want to make one of these, the wire that's got the white tracer on it, that's your positive. And then the other one's your negative. So I just stapled them to this piece of two by four and soldered these little alligator clips on there. And then I use it as a little test stand. That's my reverse light. Pretty bright, ain't it? So when I throw it in reverse, that light will come on. That's my turn signal. Bing, 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 bing. This is my tail light. Turning left, up, oh, backing up, turning right, turn the headlights off. Got my filler tube welded in place, got my sender in there, and I put two little dots of weld and then two little drill bit marks 
on the sender. So when I put the sender in, I line up those marks so I know, you know what position it's in. So it's clocked at the right position. Now there's the sender. It's got full range of motion. This is full. This is empty. It's not hitting anything. Then I gave the tank to my man Slippers and he went and had it all sandblasted inside and out. Then I went ahead and used the Silver Pour 15 for a sealer. Now I know there's many sealers out there to use for gas tanks, but I like the 415. So I sealed it, but I didn't seal this area here on the inside, like I mentioned before. Because I wanted to leave that so when I weld, it doesn't bubble up the pour 15 when I go to weld this in. Then I took this part and I sandblasted it in my little cabinet. So that way that 415's got something to stick to. It likes to have a little rough surface to stick to it. Plus it tells you in the, in the directions that if it's sandblasted, you don't have to treat it with that uh, acid they have. You can just paint right over the top of the sandblast. So now we're ready to weld this in. So I went and bought a new rotary headlight switch. And of course it's too big to fit in the slot. It really didn't give me dimensions. It looked like it was smaller in the picture. You know how that goes. <clears throat> and I didn't want one of them pull out ones where you pull it once and pull it twice. I wanted a rotary switch. So I'm like, well, that's a bust. I can maybe use it on a different project for something in the future. It wasn't that much. So I took the old blower switch apart and said, I'm gonna make that into a headlight switch. And I did. I had to add a contact to it. Because this is how this works. This is off. And this is the first position, which would be the parking lights. And then by adding that little contact, soldering it to that one, when I turn it to here, it connects all of them together and that'll be parking lights and headlights. Whereas before it just was activating that and when you turned it here, it activated the other terminal. So I got these spot weld drills for drilling out spot welds. And I got a piece of copper that's the same thickness as those terminals. I drilled me out a little disc. And then I soldered it to that connection. Then I had to open up this little disc so it could fit on there. So I made my own headlight switch out of this old switch. So now all I gotta do is put it all back together. Okay, let's see if it works. Here's parking lights. Here's headlights. See, it works. I had to make my own switch. I've got my little patch welded in. It don't look pretty, because I MIG welded it when it should be TIG welded. But hey, it works. Nobody's gonna see it. And then I sealed the outside and finished sealing the inside. Now I like using that 415 because I could seal the outside too. Some of them tank sealers are just for sealing the inside. You don't want to use it on the outside. With the 415, I can use it inside and outside. And I'll probably paint over this with some regular paint or I might even put some bed liner on there. And, and I also use some of those other tank sealers on other projects, but for this one, I thought the 415 would be, would be good. Another good one is that KB Coatings, which is just like the 415. That stuff's good too, I've used that before too. So now we gotta mount the tank and hook up the, the filler 
So I gotta, you know, make the straps and do all that. And uh, let's see what else. Gotta put the steering back in, the steering box and all that. And start wiring up my turn signals and lights. Gotta do all that. I gotta get some different headlights that got bright lights in it. So yeah, we still got a lot to do. And there's something else I'm thinking about doing to it. But I'm not going to tell you just yet what that is. You're going to have to tune in and watch for that in part five. So that's all there is to part four. So subscribe to this YouTube channel. Follow me. Facebook and Instagram. Come on, follow me. Come on, everybody. Go to our web store and buy some of our terrible apparel. This isn't it. This is the, from the Roof Rider guys. So if you want this roof stuff, you'll have to get a hold of them through their Facebook page, which is some crazy long name. Roof Talk Mowers 60 and more and stuff like that when it should just be Roof Mowers. And there's your dinner! Woo! Roof! 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 Palomino.